You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. Oh, you heard the sound. You know that intro when you hear it. We are here today to discuss one of the greatest series in the HBO universe, Game of Thrones. Here are some jewels that you might not know about this show that you want to be aware of. This particular show has 10 Guinness World Records. The show itself has 10 Guinness Records. And some of that includes that in 2016, that show had over 7 million people watching it on demand. Another one was this show has won 37 Emmys. This show has been, it is the most pirated show. This is now these are the Guinness records. And this show holds the record for the most simulcast show, which is episode five. No, I'm sorry, season five, episode two, with 173 different countries and territories watching at the same time. What am I talking about? I am talking about Game of Thrones. This is the best show that you will ever watch on HBO, hands down. That's just my opinion. You might not like it. It's okay, because I have the hand of the king, so I can say whatever I want, because I represent the king. So you can be mad all you want. It does not matter. But I'm so glad that I have these other two gentlemen with me today. I have Will and Christian. So if you would please introduce yourself. I'm sorry, I didn't even introduce myself because I'm so excited. I'm keen up, <laughs> and I'm going to be driving this ship today as we go through the world of Westeros and navigate Game of Thrones. So Will and Christian, tell us something about yourselves. Oh, here we are. Uh, Kino coming out of the gate on fire, and I love it so much. Yeah, I am Will, one of your, one of your, one of your hosts here. Excited to talk about this series because I just finished it like a couple of weeks back. And I know I'm way late to the game, but it's way fresh on my mind and spirit. And I have opinions. I, back in the day, I did not have HBO when it was at its height. Uh, I knew about it in the, like the zeitgeist of, of geek culture and heard stories here and there. And I think I picked, tried to pick up the first book and try to read it. I got about like maybe five, four chapters in and then someone told me they were like, 12 more books. I was like, ah, oh, forget that. I don't have time for that. Uh, so um, I know. So I was like, oh, okay, I'm putting that down. Maybe, maybe one day. And then our kids moved out of the house and uh, my wife and I were like, all right, it's time we have HBO max. It's time to watch. Let's go into here and see what all this hype is about. And we were like, we were binging hard, like some, sometimes to three in the morning, like, all right, all right, we got to stop. We got to go to bed. We got to work tomorrow. So i um, happy to be here. And I love it that we have two ministers in the seminary and talking about Game of Thrones. This is, this is, this is what we do. It's just my geekology. I love it so much. How about you, Christian? Let's see. I'm Christian Ashley. And like uh, Pastor Will said, I am a current seminary student at the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. It's a very fun ride, but on the Game of Thrones train, I didn't get on board until I think around the third or fourth season, which would have been Ooh. like my senior year of uh, co college. And I got to <laughs> say, man, I am so sorry. I avoided it for that long. I should have been on there from day one. It is OK. It's OK, because <laughs> as long as you on the train, then you're never going to be left behind anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that, and that's the great thing. But but one of the interesting thing about this show, I will say about me is this was one of the first shows that I would always rewatch the previous season to get prepared for the new season when it drops. Mm. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so you all had the privilege, especially you will just to binge it. So I had to wait yeah. every week to just figure out, Oh my gosh, who killed who at the red wedding? How did this all happen? Oh my God. <laughs> who is the red, the red, uh, the red priestess, all this. I, so, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's, we, this is, and I so thought about that as I was binging it, I was like, how did people wait whole seasons for the next one? But I did notice as the season was, I was like the, the big, huge, um, like towards the end of each season, it wasn't the final episode that was the the biggest episode or the most shocking. It was yes. the second to last. Mm -hmm. They'd always do this one huge. And I noticed the pattern. I was like, oh boy, here we go. It's the second to last episode. Something's about to go down. Someone's about to get killed. Something's going to happen because they need to give you at least one more episode to kind of coach, <laughs> to help you breathe, to, to, to help you relax a little bit, that, that over the summer, you're going to be okay after you finish watching Game of Thrones. So um, I, I definitely saw that. That pattern so it was around season four or whatever or five i was just like okay second to last episode that's gonna be a big one so we're gonna have like 
just to help you cope and breathe, and then we'll go on to the next season. So they were they they knew what they were doing when yeah. they were when they were rolling this out for sure. Oh my gosh, and you see why this show has won as much as it has and has been nominated because it's a well it's a really good show. It's it's really it really is a show that 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 can entice and help you think about some stuff. And so today, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna talk. We're not going to do spoilers because we assume that you already seen it. So if you mm-hmm. haven't seen it, shame on you because it's been out for, since forever. Um, <laughs> if you don't have HBO Max, just hit me up on Patreon. I might I might shoot you my login information if we have a good relationship. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, but I don't know. But yeah, but- yeah, spoilers <laughs> out the window. I'm I'm way late to the game. But <laughs> if you haven't watched it, just just stop now. Go b- yes. go watch it and yes. then come back to this oh. episode later on. Oh. Yes, because I when I tell you so, Will, I was like you. I was I was trying to read the book too, mm-hmm. but when I got um, Fire and Ice, and it was like the size of the Bible, I said I can't do this and the Bible at the same time. I cannot. I cannot. <laughs> I have a so, life. I have a family. I have people. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. So, yep. so, so I have to, I have to say this though. So I was like, okay, I, I, you know, I've been into audio books now. My wife got me into into audio books. Oh, I, I like nice. to have books. I like to write in, write the books. I mean, write in the books. And so I looked up the audio book for Fire and Ice. It is thirty three hours, total thirty three hours and forty six minutes. <laughs> that is that is a, a day and a half. Oh wow, that's just yeah. ridiculous. But that's you know what that's that's how much this this thing is 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 Game of Thrones is huge, and so we're just going to just just talk about what we liked about it, what we didn't like about it. We're just going to flow into it. So so here it is now. My my first question to my other host is, what is your favorite quote from the show? And so I'm gonna go first, and this is mine. This is mine. Mm-hmm. Mine is. It is hard to put a leash on a dog once you have a crown on his head. Mm. Tyrion Lannister. <laughs> yeah. That was my favorite quote. That was mm-hmm. my favorite quote. What about you, Christian? Let's see. It was hard to bring this down. I got it down to three. Okay. Said, okay. Now I'm going to use this one. Uh, and this is from, I can't remember if it's said on the show proper, but I know it's from one of the chapters in uh, the first book. It's Ed talking to Arya and he says, when the snows fall and the white winds blow, the lone wolf dies, but the pack survives. Mm. And that one hits oh, me a lot strong. as someone yeah. who is bound and determined every day to not learn my lesson and not be a lone wolf Christian that I can't do that. Oh. Mm. <laughs> and it's just that that lesson I have to relearn over and over again. So it's yeah. nice to hear quotes like that that affirm even from non-Christian sources. Yes. You can't do this alone. No, no, we cannot. No, we cannot. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's that's super strong. Yeah, yeah. I was I was sucked into. I mean, I love my dog so much, and so like every time I watched an episode, and one of the wolves or a dire wolf showed up, and I would like turn to Woody, and I'm like giving him hugs. He's like, "What are you doing? Get off me!" Um, uh, and or a wolf died, I'd be like, "No!" And I go over there and grab my dog, and he's like, "Oh my gosh, he must be watching Game of Thrones again." Um, but I, you know, it, it's so the the quote that I kind of quote, "Winter is coming," is is so strong, and it's so iconic and you hear it in just the zeitgeist of pop culture uh as all even before i even knew what it meant you you, you heard it and then we, we still say it now like our, even before we we even watched game of thrones we were saying it you know and but but for me the quote because it comes up at the beginning and it is pretty climatic at the end and it's the when the the expert um expert swordsman is training ira and says um they, this, there is only, um, where, how's it go? There is only one thing to say to death, not today, not today, mm-hmm. not, not today. today. Mm-hmm. And as a, as a pastor who's, <laughs> as a pastor whose week is hinged on Sundays, which is every Sunday's an Easter. And then the whole Christian year is, is hinges on, um, Easter Sunday. Uh, that just hit me. It was like, yep. Yep. There's only one thing to say to death. Not yeah. Today today and the fact that she says it at the end and she's the one who like kills the ice queen that i didn't ask ice king i had no idea that was coming and i was just like oh my gosh this having her be the one and that was just so epic i was like yes i literally jumped out of my seat cheering (laughs) yeah so so i have to say I, i was talking to a friend of mine about doing this podcast and uh i asked him the same question and that was his that was his quote Straight, not even Googling. Now, oh, granted, I, 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 I had to Google mine. I'm just going to be honest. I had to Google mine because I was like, it's been so long. But mm-hmm. he said, not today. And I was like, she did say that. 
Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, that it, it's it's interesting that this show can still resonate almost 10 years after it aired. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is still making an impact. So so then so then my next question to you all is what house would you join or be a part of? Either a greater house or less house, it doesn't matter. So I gotta also say that I just did the Google thing and I there was a whole questionnaire thing and I've answered all the questions. Cause at first this is this funny thing. And I thought about it, I said, I, you know what? I'll probably be um, house Lannister. I thought mm-hmm. house Lannister, money, power manipulation. I like that type of stuff. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Just, just like to play with people. But then I took that questionnaire and it said Stark. I was like, oh. huh? Based off my answers. So I was like, huh? Okay. I can see that. I can see being with Stark, but that's just, I just like, I don't like the cold. That's the only <laughs> issue. I just don't like to be cold. <laughs> that like is the only issue. <laughs> so I still probably just choose Lannister. I would, I would probably choose Lannister. Yeah. yeah. It, it is funny that you said that because I, I was thinking about the different houses and who I wanted to associate with, who I thought was the coolest, who could protect me. And then the Starks have like, you know, huge dogs to hang out with, you know, like dire wolves. I love them things so much. And so I was like, man, the Stark. But then I was like, the climate makes a big difference to me um, as a, somebody who grew up on the coast and the beach who loves it so much. And like the the potential for waves and surfing and ships that I was like, you know, the house Stark would be fun, but yeah, it gets cold. And I don't, I don't want that. I'd be, I'd be good for a day. And I like hanging out with, with the wolves, but, but yeah, um, King's Landing, only because the Lancer, because of the climate, it looked so tropical. It looked like they were hanging out in the Caribbean, yeah. and I was like, "Man, I want, I want to be there." So I, and until it starts to get mowed down with fire, then, then you know, then I can escape. But it is pretty funny because this place. I mean, a lot of this was filmed in Iceland, right? Yes, like a lot yes. of it was filmed in Iceland, and I was able to go to Iceland this past summer, oh, yeah. and and I had we hadn't watched Game of Thrones yet. We knew like some parts of Star Wars and other things have been filmed in Iceland. So we were kind of looking at that. I think uh, Thor Dark World was was filmed there as well. So we were, I was looking at some of that. And then as we were watching, like, oh, there's Iceland. I think I've been there. Or I love that part. That definitely looks like Iceland. Cause, and, and so we geeked out hard on that because we loved our trip to Iceland. But but you're right. Like I started, there, there's different houses you want to associate with if you like value your life but then <laughs> but then there's but then there's like for me it was like climate <laughs> and there's no way i'm hanging out the ice wall i'm going i'm going to caribbean wait hold on hold on you know what it didn't it's not even about the ice the white walkers though like granted they have been destroyed <laughs> mm-hmm. but if if we were still there no nah, we got to deal with the white walkers and and i uh, know nah, all that other stuff that comes with it yeah mm-hmm. no nah, you know what yeah. no nah, it's yeah yeah no i feel you i feel you what about you christian I'm hearing a large anti-cold weather bias up here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it really yeah. offends me as someone who's very warm blooded. That extra blubber I have keeps me warm, I guess, from everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people make fun of me up here because I'll go up to class when it's like 32 degrees, just walking from my dorm to class with my you know T-shirt and basketball shorts on. It's like, what's wrong with you? Oh, oh. what's wrong uh, with you? Christian. Chris is walking around like a middle schooler. Yes, uh, in winter. <laughs> every <laughs> every time I drop my kids off to school in winter, and I saw the the boys walking, I'm like, "Why are they wearing shorts? <laughs> Who's raising these kids?" Uh, you know. But so that, that's I see Christian walk around. I, I would be that the one in, in Louisville going, "Oh my gosh, Christian, you got to put on some pants." What's going? But but you know, if you love the cold weather and want to feel it, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So more power to you. Before I get my answer to Iceland as well, I was there five years ago and there was actually Mm. a tour being led by someone dressed up as the hound. Oh, wow. That's great. Uh, great. I I enjoyed it so much. But on to the actual answer, uh, I would say Stark would probably be where I align. But in the interest of giving a more interesting answer, Mm -hmm. I'm going to say House Forrester from the Telltale Game series. Uh, Either of you have been able to play. I know you're not a gamer, Pastor Will. But oh, no, they are no. essentially a proto Stark kind of team. They're a loving family. You know, bad things happen to them because this is Game of Thrones. But like, I would choose the people that would love and support me. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's Good awesome. Pull. Um, so, so, so then, <laughs> so with these houses and all of this, now here, here is where we get into the meat of it. I'm telling you now, we're getting right into the meat of it. We, we, we moving right ahead. So I want to ask you all. And I'll let you all answer and then I'll answer. But my question is, um, what do you like about Game of Thrones? 
what issues, if you had any, with the series from the beginning to the end. Mm, golly, there you go. Christian, you go for it. I yeah. go first. I'll, um, I got some thoughts brewing. I'd say my number one is the characters. Like, I love plots all day long, but if you give me some characters to care about, I'm in. And we start, the Starks are a pretty good start with that. And then yes. later on, when you you start, you hate Jamie. You kind of don't like Tyrion that much. But then as time goes on, you go, oh my gosh, these these people are well-fleshed people that have more to them just a generic villain or, you know, generic side villain. Actually, they could be heroes in their own right sometimes. And that's what brings me back over because I want to see them mature. I want to see them succeed despite all the bad things that are happening to them. Yeah. What was what was interesting is that I saw a YouTube video that took this the took the book and ran it through some type of computer generated thing and figure out who was all interacting with everything. And they and they said that Tyrion is the main protagonist in the whole series because he touched most, if not all, the characters in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Yeah. He's almost like he's almost like Kevin Bacon. Three three (laughs) three degrees of separation of Kevin Bacon. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's that's what Tyrion was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I like that. I like that. All right, what about you, Will? Yeah, I would I would say that too. They're definitely characters that you love and, and care about, and be careful because they they may not last an, another episode <laughs> if you get too attached. And and I kind of had in my mind there were some spoilers since I was so late to game. I, I kind of knew who was going to last to the end. I, I knew some big big themes along the way. What was going to happen? Um, again, like I said, like I, I knew about the red wedding, but I didn't know it was going to be that red of a wedding and, and that shocking or when it was coming. There was a point when, when that was getting ready to unfold and they closed the doors and locked. I went, Oh my gosh, here it is. No. Oh no, no. And I had no idea that like Rob Stark was going to um, die that early, you know? And I was like, Oh my gosh, I didn't really realize that. So, so I, and, and like we've said before, like it's, it's a biblical show because of the, the violence and the power and the betrayal and the family systems and the dysfunction and the quest and hunger for redemption and revenge and all those things were were part of of the story and and leading to towards the end of what I what I didn't like about there's definitely like moments when you felt uncomfortable it's like watching breaking bad and you're like why am i watching this like this is like making me feel horrible but then when you think about like the reason if it makes you uncomfortable good it should and there there are some you know um exploitation and kind of um, you know, violence porn or whatever you want to we'll talk about. Like, are we doing it just to do it? Does it, does it serve the the story? Um, but, but I think because of that world, it, it kind of stuck with that theme. And um, I, uh, yeah. So, so those kind of parts that made me feel uncomfortable, but it should, it should. And we've talked about before about how all those themes and, and happenings in the Bible as well. And um, I think towards the end, there's a lot of character development towards the end. I, I didn't mind the last, I heard so much about the last season about how you talk about how like the world record of, of how popular it was and yeah. boy, did it fall from grace fast. Like yes. they were, yes. fans loved it so much. And then that final season, boom, I think Benius and Weiss or whatever, like had like star, Star Wars uh, movie contracts and all kinds of because they were so popular. As soon as season eight happened, they're like, nope, people dropped them like like a heartbeat. Um, and and it's like, oh, why why do they do that? And so as I watched it, I didn't think it was that bad. But the regression or going right back to where the characters were at the very beginning of the series was a little disheartening. So that's what I disliked. I was like, oh man, it felt a little rushed there at the end. And we built all this for this character development, and then to just fall back to what they were in the first couple of seasons, um, I didn't, I didn't like as much. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, and I, I agree with you on that. I agree with you on that. I think, I think one of the great things I liked about this series was all the foreshadowing that was happening mm-hmm. in the show and behind the scenes where if you, if you didn't pay attention, you would have lost like the, the, the jewels and the nuggets that was dropped along the way. Um, and, and even if you are, even if you read the book, you still were seeing the book come to life in in the in the series form. And yes, they had some changes. Yes, there's going to be always going to be some major changes. But but sure. the, the the foreshadowing and and how everything was set up to oh gosh, now this is this is where I don't like is season eight. I just <laughs> it, it the, the ending just didn't make really sense and and i get it because uh they were trying to wait for 
um, Martin to finish his to get it caught up, but he couldn't. And I and I we understand, we understand. But but <laughs> it, it, as as a whole, it was it was fascinating to to think about something that happened in season one was impacting throughout the rest of the series throughout and and then not only that but the stuff that happened before the series even started was making an impact all of this started because somebody said something about somebody and took somebody's girlfriend and then they got mad that's that's how this all started out <laughs> that's how it all started out it was over a girl and it always it, most of the wars are fought over anyway over a girl <laughs> yes yeah yeah. On. yeah yeah but but it was it was i think i think that 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 the, the beauty of the foreshadowing the and to just the place like the, the in, in the second season the first uh, uh the second episode of season two where ed stark gets beheaded and you was like i wow. just i just fell in love with him mm-hmm. how mm-hmm. is that how and then to, then to to see aria take that and and from your quote, Christian, she did the total opposite though. She mm-hmm. she became the lone wolf, but always came back to the pack though. She always came back to be rejuvenated for something that she always had to do great bigger. That that was that was like wow. That was wow. So so that was that was the things that I like to foreshadow. But but Will brought it up, and I'm gonna have to tell talk about it. It was just it's just the last season. It was it was I we, mm-hmm. I, it, we in my mind I'm like we waited two years for this. <laughs> now, granted, I sat and watched it, yes, because mm-hmm. I waited for two years for it. I'm going yes. I'm gonna so, finish. So this help me understand the time. So season seven ended, and then fans had to wait two years for season eight. Is that what what happened? I believe um, I believe so. Thereabouts, yeah, thereabouts, um, and then. Yeah, I'm I'm curious on your guys' take on on season eight because I have I have mine, um, but I I didn't have to wait the two years. Um, I just jumped right in, and then I, my expectations were super low because I had heard like the felt my sister in law, uh, my brother's wife's huge Game of Thrones fans, and I kind of kept along with her um, a little bit what was going, what she liked, and and she was just so stoked for so many. Uh, points that happened throughout the the series, but then season eight, she was like, "Oh my gosh, they 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 ruined it for me!" And I was like, "Oh wow!" So when I got to it, I, I was expecting to feel the same way, and I didn't necessarily though. But I'd love to hear your two take on on season eight, and then I'll chime in on 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 what I thought. But let me preface this with: when Benioff and Weiss just decided to sign on for the series, they did not sign on to make an ending for it. So I will give the I will cut them some slack there. However. The vitriol begins now. Uh, <laughs> I, I started getting really down on the show around season five ish. I, I kept watching. There was still stuff I enjoyed that happened, but it's just like there's no direction here. They're waiting for a man who's never going to finish something at this point in time. It feels maybe he will, but they did not sign up to write an original ending for the show. And you know, Kino, I from what I remember, you're a big anime fan, mm-hmm. so this happens all the time for older stuff is that they'll just make an original ending. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's really bad. Yeah. And yeah. I would argue this is in the really bad category. And it's just, uh, I th- can't remember who brought up character regressions earlier, but that is one of the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor Will, thank you. Mm-hmm. That is what hurt me the most. I mean, just to see Jamie give up everything again to go back into Cersei's arm after having learned his lesson finally, and then dying with her was like, you don't, you didn't know what to do with him. And just other stuff. Just you gave us you waited two years and this was the end result. Yeah, because because you have to. I'm not to cut you off, but I'm a, I'm a, yeah, I'm yeah. a pick it pack on what you're talking about. Because think about this, Will. We we understood by I think maybe by season four or five that Daenerys was going to come at some point, mm-hmm. and to watch her in the background in Essos gather the army that she had with her dragons and to make a way and the people in the in, in um in King's Landing hearing about it and we're watching it knowing that this is going to come this has to be an epic battle because um you have two queens that are on the, that's claiming the Iron Throne when it, when the series started out you had five kings that was claim had a claim to the Iron Throne so it went from the men all the men died <laughs> And then there was nothing but the women was left, mm-hmm. and and so we and then to get to this point where she Daenerys just flips, oh my god, all of a something like like 
you did all of that to free all these people to then go and kill the other people that they had nothing to do with this. Like, no, 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 that that wasn't cool. Like, that wasn't cool. Like, like that. That I think out of everything, because there's there's still some more stuff. But out of everything, that was the most hurtful thing to witness, knowing how she had evolved. Like she had literally when she came out of the she was reborn when she went through the fire. She mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. she was reborn and she had mm-hmm. a different mindset about herself that when she got to where she was supposed to be, she ended up taking on a narrative that was no longer hers, but it was in her bloodline, and that was an issue. Because again, right. she had she had grown, she released. Let, let's let's go back. Do, do you, y'all remember when she was buying those slaves mm-hmm. and she gave up that dragon and he was talking junk. I can't think of the guy named the slave master was talking junk to her in old Valyria. Yeah. And she was like, I can talk Valyria too. That's my native tongue. The car is boom. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. We was like, yes, we we was waiting for this. This is what we talk. Dragons burning them up. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then you come and she gets to gets to the Iron Throne. She gets to the, only to do it in blood. Mm-hmm. We thought that she was going to be more of a diplomat and handle this. And I understand you got you got to kill some folks. I get it. I get it. You got to kill some folks. You can't you can't have your competition still alive. They have to die. Mm-hmm. I get it, but uh, not the people. The people didn't have nothing to do with it, and that seems as though she and Cersei was on the same wavelength when that, that was never the case in the first place. Because Cersei, Cersei was all jacked up because she married a man who didn't love her in the first place, because her mm-hmm. father told her to, and she just still loved her brother, and and it's uh, 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 <laughs> you know, but 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 she was a mother, and we get we get her fighting for her children. We get that. We get that. But then when you lose your children, you got nothing else. You know, I get it. I listen. You the queen. You can do what you want. You can. But but for her to have Cersei and Daenerys on the same wavelength, that was disappointing. That was really disappointing to see those two women who should be total opposites were actually seen in the same realm on the last episode. That and that yeah. hurt. Yeah, that hurt. Yeah. That hurt. Yeah, I think there are moments along this series that were was really hard to watch. Um, the Red Wedding, uh, uh, Cersei and and the Shame Walk, you know, um, was, was super hard to to watch. And then, yeah, it was hard watching people and innocent children being burned to death because of one woman's rage. For us, I guess my wife and I, as we were walking, we were like, yeah, you know, it's hard to change, you know, your, your family history, your family pattern. It's hard to detach yourself and be different from your, the, all that talk of the skepticism of those around her. Like, don't, don't, is she going to be like her dad? Is she going to be like her dad? We see, chicks, we already see her kind of, you know, a little, little, uh, kind of resistance to Jon Snow and then what? Nope. I, 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 I'm not going to fight the North and the, the, the night King just yet. I need to go down and take this. Uh, for, we saw some skepticism in the way that uh, Sinsa looked at her and that mm-hmm. she was jealous of, of, and Danny was, was jealous of, of Sinsa. I was like, Oh boy, here we go. And so I had the feeling it was going to go that way. She was just going to like, Nope, she's not going to be any different than her dad. And she's going to be like that. And so for me, I saw that track and I wish it had been different, but as my wife said, she was like, well, that makes sense. That happens in real life. It is hard to, to detach yourself from family patterns. Yeah. And the end when, when the dragon doesn't, when, when Jon Snow stabs, um, the, the near, uh, Danny in, in the back to find a killer. And then that dragon comes, you're like, Oh, here we go. The dragon's going to kill Jon Snow. But what the dragon turns to the throne and melts the throne. Mm-hmm. That's like, what killed Danny? What killed her? Was it Jon Snow or was it the seduction of power and that throne that really killed her? So the dragon took out the thing that killed um, his mother. And that was the throne. And that was pretty powerful for me to fly off with her 
after melting down that throne, I was like, that makes complete sense. That was brilliant. I like that part, but yeah, yeah killing, killing children, uh, melting down a whole, uh, city with fire that, that was really hard to watch. And there, there was one of the moments like, Oh, come on guys. Why are, why are we doing this? I can understand the weight and the really hope that she would take and do things differently while wow, that was disappointing for, for the fans and for people viewing. And we, I, we just have to say, I don't need to say it. Like the, my least favorite character got to be King at the end. I mean, I, I feel sorry for Bran, <laughs> but like the most boring <laughs> dude who stares at you and says, I knew you were coming. Oh, I can see y'all. He had these little one-liner, cheesy one-liner wisdom saying, I'm like, oh my gosh, whatever. Eye-rolling moments for me. And then they make him king. It makes sense because he started off the show from episode one and and the powerless um, becoming the most powerful. I, I like that. We see that in yeah. scripture. We yeah. see that with the Hobbit. We see that in Lord of the Rings. So I totally get what they were trying to do with that with that trope. But uh, I was like, oh my gosh, that my least favorite character is the one who's king. Oh boy. Yeah. That, so that's it. <laughs> so so will so will and Christian then this brings in to my next question which I want to ask is what do you think is the most controversial moment or moments of the series? Mm. I would say it was the decision to change Sansa being the one who married Ramsay from was it Jane Poole or something like that from the books I can't remember off the top of my head. And oh, Ramsay was awful. It was needless because it makes Littlefinger look like a moron. It, it so they ever think that Ramsey would be on his side. It makes, uh, it really destroys her agency mm. in that moment. And that's something we can talk about later about female agency and the rest of the series kind of dies after a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, not, not totally, but for Sansa herself, like she, she should have just stayed in the veil. And it's one of the worst things that they did in my opinion. And I would also say, uh, briefly, it's Stannis sacrificing Shireen. Not that he wouldn't do it, mm. but I believe that the way they portrayed it in the show, I don't think he was desperate enough to do it like the way they wanted to portray it. Yeah. I think he would, given push to the brink, he would do it, but not like this. Yeah, so I, I, I see that. But going with Stannis, Stannis was being fed false hope from the uh, Red Priestess, though. Mm-hmm. Like, like she was she was one of his advisors and i'm like why are you gonna listen to this crazy woman that come out of nowhere about what you're supposed to do and your daughter has more information than anybody about what's going on in the whole thing but you don't want to listen to her because you know that which i forgot what how did the red priestess convince him to kill her um I think it had to be the storm right to, huh, say it again I wanted to stop the storm or something. So they have a better battle. No, no, it was, it was, it was because the the, it was the blood that needed to be oh, shed. So he yeah, can yeah, gain yeah. victory. Yes, that's right. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. but here's the thing. Here's the thing. So I, I watched this other YouTube video that, um, Stannis, um, Robert and what was the other brother? What was the sword swallower? I love that. I love that. I love that line. I love that mm-hmm. line. That was Loris. a funny line. No, no, not Loris. Um, <laughs> um, Rinley. Um, Rinley, 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 right? They all had uh, Targaryen blood in them. They had Targaryen blood in them, which right, made right. them give them the right to claim the throne. But I'm like, eh, no. But I see, I, I see what you're trying to do, but I don't like it. Um, but I, I think for me, the most controversial thing, and it's not really controversial, but I think it's just it was finding out the origin of the Night King. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Finding out how did this come about and to know that the children of the forest created the Night King to help them to fight against humanity, humans, um, then in order for them to be turned against them was like, wow. I was like, Dad, that's that's messed up. That is that's messed up. Like, oh, you can't you can't do that. And I think also, um, it was the how can I say this? It was it was the inability to create or forge Valerian steel. Mm. Cause those swords, gosh, there's so much, there's so much we can talk about. But those <laughs> swords that those houses had, most of them, most of them, not all of them, were made from Valyrian steel, mm-hmm. and they had, they had, they had a, such a beautiful history and everything, and, and to, and to have, um, hey, was it ice? No, it wasn't ice. What was, what was Ed's, Edard Stark's sword that got forged down? Was that dragon, dragon scale, dragon? No, no, I, no. I don't remember his name. Oh gosh, uh, ice! It was ice! It was ice! Okay. It was ice! It was ice! To see ice 
get breaking down into uh, the wedding. What was the uh, w- widow? What was widow's whale? Widow's whale, and what was the other one? The little dagger that uh, oh, that, that she killed him with. She killed. The she ice did cream. kill him with it. She did. Mm-hmm. She did. <laughs> but I thought I the widow's whale and um, not needle. Oh my gosh, needle. Oh gosh, I remember. Okay, anyway, um, it was it was it was the it was it was. I, I thought that if and I don't, I don't again I didn't read the books so I don't know all the stuff in the, in the book but I I thought so Christian let me let me just go to you then Oathkeeper thank you thank you it was Oathkeeper thank you thank you um mm-hmm. that that it, having having those swords even though they weren't they weren't a part of the main story they were they were a part of the lore that mm-hmm. drew people in to the Game of Thrones, like literally to find out the history about Ice, Oathkeeper, Needle, uh, the Widow's Whale, Widow's Tale. Um, uh, I can't think of uh, Jamie's sword, but every every main character had a sword that was tied to their house that had an origin that came from old the old Valyria. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, so I thought that was I thought that was I think that was one of the things that I thought that was controversial. Just you didn't have someone who can who can who could not not well? Let me say, forge it mm-hmm. from from the actual iron ore itself. So that was me. Yeah, and I like it in high fantasy that uh, that swords have names and histories and personalities unto themselves. I just I just love it. I, I love it that that swords have those have names. That's a, that's a cool part. I think for me, the controversial part, like yeah, I mean, there was there were some there were some times when yeah, the exploitation of women just was just over the top for me to watch and see. And, and I, and it, it was just hard to watch. And I was like, why am I doing this? But it's a reality in our world mm-hmm. uh, and you need to face it. And yeah, holding up that mirror again to, to the human condition and, and what our world faces and that I'm sheltered from uh, that there's reality for a lot of people in the world. And so, uh, and so, and then there was parts like they did this in, in walking dead too. So you had the governor that was so bad. And then you had like, Oh, we're going to up this again. And the and Negan's could be even worse than the governor. And like, they go that way. So you had Joffrey who's like horrible. And then, and then like, we're going to up it again. And Ramsey's going to be even worse than Joffrey. You know, it's like, Oh, this poor girl has to put up with these awful dudes. Um, and then the, the torture of, of Theon. Um, oh. I, you have to forgive me guy. Like my pronouncing fantasy names. I'm horrible. I can't do it. I can recognize them on paper, but I have a hard time pronouncing their names. So if Theon, I guess I'm saying that right. Or people, but, but uh, like to see the torture of certain people and dr- them drug through that for me, that was some, it wasn't necessarily controversial, like in terms of plot moves by the creators, but just as you watch it, there are times, and I can understand that this show's not for everyone. Or it, it really isn't. Um, but as we've said before, there's a parts of the Bible that are the, just as, um, just as, um, what, what am I trying to say? Just as rated R, rated X as, as the movie, and so um, as as the show. So, so those are my parts. Just they weren't like overall like story beats that were controversial to me. Um, but you could tell when you have something so popular, you want to keep it going beyond the books. And and I don't want it to be uh, you want it to be a cash grab. You don't want it to be a cash grabber. Like we got to do a couple more episodes because it's so popular. And then it's hard to stick a landing for any kind of story or movie and that kind of thing. Even my sermons I have a hard time ending them because I just can't. It's hard to stick the landing. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I know. I was like, man, I can get the plane in the air, but man, how do I land this? <laughs> um, and, and and so the same way w- with the show. So that that those are the parts for me it was just kind of hard to watch but but my one of my favorite characters um aria um like her storyline and her able to yeah. get revenge from the red wedding and then the, this religious thing that she went through that was kind of weird but but come out with it gave her the power and the effort to like death not today and kill the night king and then i loved her at the end like at the final end she's on that ship she's going to go explore she's not going to get married to anybody she's not going to settle down she's going to go out and explore so please either make that spinoff show or do a book about that or a graphic novel. I mean, it, let's, let's do a comic book series or graphic novel yeah. or, or book of her adventures post season eight. Like I want to know that story. So yeah. uh, George Martin, if you're listening, please let's, let's do that one. No, don't drop what you're doing. Don't drop what you're doing. Finish whatever you need to finish. But like, <laughs> I, 
someone equip somebody to do that graphic novel because I'll I'll buy that in a heartbeat. But that's so funny because we knew we knew that Arya was going to be something because she she automatically said I I'm not getting married I don't like wearing dresses I don't like any of this stuff I listen I'm out here fighting with the boys so we mm-hmm. knew that that and to see her the the evolution of her story oh that was so beautiful really um, for her to get the revenge that she so was needing to have because that was driving her for the longest and and oh, that that she she was able to become the, the faceless man and and all that i mean just oh it's just I, that was <laughs> yeah yeah that was that was good that was good yeah i like that i like that all right all right so so here's my next question my next question is um how do you think the series explored the power leadership and ethics how do you think this this series explored uh, the power, leadership, and ethics? Like, like how is that? Because, because we one, we already know that everybody wants to be on the Iron Throne. They, you do, and I, and I get it. Because I mean, it's, that is a that is a good seat to have. That is it's a good seat to have, um, unless you are watching um, what's the other series now? I suppose I won't House go of Dragon. House of Dragons, but I'm mentioning it now. I'm mentioning it now. House of Dragons. If you're sure. watching that, yeah, you might want to. You might want to. You know, hold off. But, <laughs> but, but it's but, next on our list to watch. We haven't but, watched it. I know about it, but you know, <sighs> I'm okay with spoilers too because I'll, I'll, I've, I've heard about it. But yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. <laughs> then you can join Kino and I on that episode that we're doing it. I think in about a month. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um. But 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 you have you have every region having its own power struggle. For who is who is controlling that area, who mm-hmm. has allegiance to the new king, the old king, who has allegiance to the old gods, the new gods, the the faceless one, the drowned gods, and all of this. And so and so I I, I want I want to pick your brains just a little bit and ask you, what do you what do you think? How do you think this series explores these type these types of, of, of power, leadership, and ethics? And I want to start off by saying, let's not forget about the order of the maesters. Right. Let's not forget about the order of the masters because that has to be included in this conversation. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna make the pitch for for Christian to start a class or make a pitch to his professors to have like a, that's the name of the class. It's uh, power, leadership, and ethics in the Game of Thrones. <laughs> How to be and not be a pastor and priest in the modern post Christian world. Yeah, that's that 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 is the class. You know, watch Game of Thrones and then talk about. It. No, I think you're right. Like it's all about power. It's all about leadership. It's all about kind of the ethics. And I think. Um, that this show just uh, reveals and, and unveils for us the seduction of power and what people will do to take it. The only person in this entire show, I think, who, who, I mean, Ari was about revenge and she had her list of names that she was going to take out. But then uh, Jon Snow was the only one who was like, I'm, I'm going to stick to my words and I'm going to lead by example. And I'm going to defend Sam, who they end up becoming best friends. And 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 um, he didn't want the king. Uh, he didn't want the, the throne. And and there was that quote, too, is like whoever wants the throne probably shouldn't be on it. Um, is, is the is the other. So I think Jon Snow shows that kind of leadership all the way up to the end. Um, but, yeah, the the seduction of power. Um Leadership is it for yourself or for your people? Um, who who you really taking care of? Is it your own family or is it really the the, the masses that you're entrusted with? And then the ethics along the way is like, yeah, uh, are you willing to bend your ethics to get that power, or are you going to stick to your word? I think I think the Starks, uh, John Snow in particular, was like, I'm a man of my word. I gave you my word. I'm not going to break it. And that that was the principle that led him through that. And I think the other, oh man, I can't believe I forgot. Her name, the one who has made the night there at the end by Jamie. Oh, Brienne. Lady Brienne. Brienne, like oh, such a good character. And like she stuck to her, you know, oath and word and stuck to, to her principles all the way through. And I um that I looked up I looked up to that and I thought that was expressed pretty well. So yeah, that's it's it's all in there. That's yeah, good. good. What about you, Christian? I think what it shows us is who we are. Mm. And you give people a taste of power and it is so seductive. It's like, mm-hmm. I can use this for me. Okay. And then maybe it starts with good intentions. It's like, you know, I want to become you know, president so I can look after the nation. Or I want to be in charge of this church because I think we can get some good things done. And sometimes, yeah, that works. But then when there's no checks and balances around, when we're not right with God, it's going to lead downhill. And it just proves the, like the cyclical nature of humanity is uh, we mm-hmm. will learn our lesson. Maybe we'll do better. 
that we screw up and we go, well, might as well keep going. <laughs> Learn our lesson again. A rinse, repeat. Uh, story <laughs> of my life. Story of everyone's lives. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think I think the main thing that we see with the char- characters that uh, Will pointed out is that having strong ethics, strong ethics that, that did not come from anywhere else but yourself in the terms of in, in deciding that I want to be different than everyone else around me really, really st- made people stand out. Because funny enough, even Tyrion had ethics. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He stuck to his guns. He knew what he was good at and he stood and he stood on that. And he was great at what he did. He, yeah, he, as loose as he lived with like <laughs> his his sex and booze, but but he, for for Sansa, he was like, no, I'm I'm not gonna. And she yes. told him later on, she goes, "You're the only one who who respected me and right. treated me well. Right. You're mm-hmm. the only one." And even in the midst of like as this poor guy who like everybody picked on and saw him as a mutant or less than because of of who he was and what he represented and what he was born with you know um he still he had a heart for yeah i'm i'm going to take care of her and 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 not exploit her as others have and and that came out but yeah i think you're right like i didn't mean to step on on your um Words oh, too keen, yeah. but I think I think that leadership there of yeah, you're you're wearing the hand, you know, was there. You're wearing your your hand <laughs> and to help remind and hold accountable the king uh, or queen to these principles. If they got off, they're an advisor. They're the ones who are supposed to help steer help steer them in the right direction. And I hope you know there are people in my own lives that are like I don't anoint them as my hand, but but I like I hope there are people who walk line side me who. Um, will um, remind me of of who I am and and who I belong to, which is the Lord and and what I'm in for, um, you know, what I'm in this for, um, and not my own gain, but but to serve Christ and serve others. But 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 then going to Christian's point, we we see that power corrupts. Power mm-hmm. corrupts, and and if you don't have a good moral center. Then, then the power is going to corrupt you even more because you're seeing, oh, this is this is good. This is this is what it's almost like drinking sweet tea for the first time. You're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> why was I drinking unsweet tea? <laughs> yeah, I think Danny. I mean, Danny, she had problems. She wanted to do things differently. We're going to do this differently. But then she saw she saw her right hand woman um, beheaded in front of her, yeah. and she was like, nope, it's over. Nope, yep. nope. It, the game's on. Like no, no more. And the people around her, are like, oh crap, what, what, did, what just happened? But and she saw that. There, so there were things along the way. It wasn't just, a, I guess, the seduction of the throne. She wanted it, but she also saw what others were capable of doing and didn't want that to happen again. Um, she, t- I, I feel like she did the wrong thing. She could have done things differently. But again, she watched her right hand woman that she really cared about and loved yeah. they had it right in front of her face. Yeah. And, and though, and, but, but we also see how those type of moments where you witness some type of traumatic, whatever it is, it, sh- it shaped their identities from there on out because talking about Tyrion, I remember the scene between him and Cersei when they was talking to each other and she was like, you killed my mother when you came out of the womb. Mm. And he was like, wait a minute, she's my mother too. I didn't, I didn't do that. But that, <laughs> yeah. that in her mind was like, you are the worst of the worst. And even though we're family, I don't care about you. But funny enough, he still cared about her, that he was protecting her even to the very end, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. even to the very end. And I was like, wow, that, 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 that again speaks to his, his ethics and his character, don't, don't not regret. He might be loose. <laughs> he loved to drink and he loved to sleep around. He did. <laughs> but when it came down for him and his business and what he was trying to do, he was all about that. And I and I and I like that. I did. I did like that. That that showed me that you, even when people didn't treat you right, you still treat them better than they treated you. Right. Even if they didn't know it. And that was. Mm-hmm. I thought that was an awesome thing. Okay. Oh my gosh. Listen, we could we could stay here forever. Yeah. Yep, it could forever. be a three-parter, an eight-parter. Oh, my we gosh. Could, we could do it for seven seasons, and people love it. And then the eighth <laughs> one, people are like, what are they doing? <laughs> so, well, right. the end. so, so, all right, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a jump in and ask this question. Um, how do you think the series depicted good and evil? 
did do you, do you think that the series was able to distinguish between the two, or was the lines was blurry? When I look at A Song of Ice and Fire, A Game of Thrones, I see a man who has no hope in his life, and that is this is the direct result of that. I mean, it's very similar if we remember the old uh, myth of Pandora's jar. It's not actually a box. Hope being released to us is a good thing because we have something to hope in. We have Jesus Christ. But to the Greeks, that story was a downer ending because they had nothing to hope in. So they saw hope being released as like the ultimate evil in some respects. And I see in Game of Thrones, like there is no hope. I mean, maybe people can be better. It's like the best we're going to get. Like maybe Bran will successfully lead the kingdom. Who knows? But it just shows humans as who we are without Christ, which is self-centered, focused only on what we desire. But there's no hope in that. Yeah. 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 What about you, Will? Yeah, I I think it it definitely is a post-modern, post-Christian understanding of good versus evil. I mean, you definitely have, like you said, the the religious order who were trying to do good, but yet they were exploitive as, as well. Uh, they had they had their own kind of pantheon of gods and spirituality that they were trying to live up to, um, the red sorceress and and that kind of stuff. And um, but but yeah, it was definitely one of those things where like you definitely knew, um, <laughs> you knew when you were feeling so uncomfortable, this stuff was going like yeah, that's that's evil. Um, <laughs> and but then you know it's hard too because even the revenge moments, you're like oh yeah, you cheer it, but then you're like wow that that's not necessarily like you want to see either, you know, death on any kind. So, um, yeah, it was definitely blurry, but there's, there's definitely those themes are there. Um, even cheering for dragons and cheering, for, you know, being upset when one dies and brought back to life as a zombie. I mean, come on zombie dragons. I'm there. I'm all over it. Like that's, <laughs> that was the coolest thing. Um, but, but yeah, it's, th- there's definitely a blurry line there. It was definitely a big part of the, the show, but man, you really had a, it, it was nuanced. Uh, through and throughout yeah so we we've established that that every good person can become evil and every evil person can be redeemed mm-hmm. if you mm-hmm. allow yourself to be that way mm-hmm. and and the, the the reality is um because I, I have to throw this in there because the, the maesters mm-hmm. like the maesters though they seem as though they were just the keepers of wisdom and the the just the the messengers of the day, um, we saw that some of them, though they received the same type of learning, assimilated into the houses that they were um, assigned to. Right, uh-huh. right, right. Like, like they, the neutral parties they're supposed to be. Right, right. They're, but we saw that, they, that there was there's no neutrality in all of this. Like all of them had their own agenda. All mm-hmm. of them. Gosh, I can't I can't remember the Starks Maester. Um, oh my gosh. Um, forgive me for not for not having his name. Um, but but he had his own agenda. That even to the very end, his agenda was that a Stark had to remain in Winterfell. And those kids had to leave Winterfell just so that that the Starks will have somebody in Winterfell. Yes. Lewin. Thank you. Maester Lewin. Maester <laughs> Lewin. Yeah. And and it's, 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 it is, it is, this is what I'm saying. If you think you're good, trust me, you're not good. <laughs> if you think you're good, mm-hmm. you're not good. Cause in your, in your thoughts about you being good, you're probably just good to yourself. Nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and, and there's an analogy in that too. Even like in World War II, like you have the, the church kind of selling out to, to the Nazis. And then you have someone like Bonhoeffer kind of standing mm-hmm. up, mm-hmm. Uh, the confessional mm-hmm. church standing up to saying, why, why are you guys assimilating into this when you should be standing against it? Yeah. Uh, you're the ones who should be the prophets speaking, speaking truth to power. And and so Bonhoeffer was that, and he was executed for it. So I, I get it. Those, those masters didn't want to be executed for it. Like they, they've seen what happens around them. If you, if you challenge power, if you speak truth to power, but, but yeah, we see it in our own lives, in our own nation. You saw it happen on January 6th. You see it, what happened, um, you know, Bonhoeffer and, and uh, the confessional church over there. So I think, I think it's, there's definitely realities of, of how that expressed in our own, own day as well. Yeah. And, and the, for any believer, we have to always examine ourselves and the things that we do through the works of the Holy Spirit. 
Because Jesus mm-hmm. said that the Spirit is there to t- teach us and remind us of the things that He did, and mm-hmm. and if if we are not paying attention to what we did in relation to what we're supposed to do, then then and we think and we and we think that just because we're in church, I'm good. Just because I'm a believer, I'm good. I no 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 no. I'm pretty sure that you just as mean and nasty as anybody else. It's mm-hmm. just that you hold it in real good. Because if you think that you like again, like my point is, if you think that you're good, you're not. And but here's the other thing: if you think that you're evil or you think that you're bad, you're not. No, yeah. it's it's literally your choices that you make. It is the choices that you make, and and if you have what Christian pointed out, if you have that hope, guess what? You're always going to choose to find something to be hopeful about to keep you pushing forward. Nice. But yeah. if you choose, to, if you choose to see the bad, then you're going to find that thing that's going to keep you going down that path. But it's still a choice. And I love the fact that we can choose how we respond to certain things. And, and we see this in Game of Thrones that that people choices dictated the storyline. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A single choice dictated sto- the single choice of 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 having an incestual relationship that produces children. That's something they're used to anyway. That that's that's what they're used to. But the fact is that it, it messes up the line to who get, gets claimed to the throne. Then people got to die. Because if you know my secret, I can't trust you to keep my secret. I have to kill you. Yeah, I have to yeah. kill you. And you killing folks and pushing babies out the window all because <laughs> you want to get around. Something's wrong with that. <laughs> Something's wrong with that. Yes. Yeah. Again, if you feel uncomfortable, good. Good. You yeah. should. <laughs> yeah. You, you, we, I, one of the great things I love is that every time you see God doing something with the people or individuals, he's making them uncomfortable in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Right. He is, he is doing it on purpose so that they can then either recognize the God that they serve or the faults that they have. But you're going to do some type of examination to figure out if you're doing it right or you're doing it wrong. Mm-hmm. But you can't get mad because God put you there. <laughs> you can complain, but that ain't going to change nothing. Well, it, it did because they, they complained. I'm sorry. The Israelites complained to Moses. And eventually, <laughs> eventually he gave them some water. <laughs> I know. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. Listen, we are almost at the end. So I got one more question. And I know... <laughs> But I, I wanna I wanna ask this last question before we do our wrap up, and that is, how do you think this series has impacted pop culture? How do you oh, think this series has impacted pop culture? Oh, it it, it 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 was a game changer. I mean, again, the the messages or the the storyline and plot beats within this fantasy show, um, or really, I would make the case are, are the same tropes that are in Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. they're in the Bible, mm-hmm. they're in Star Wars. They're, you know, they're the same kind of high fantasy thing. They, they just kind of upped it, its game to HBO level of like uh, sex, violence, and beheadings, yeah. you know? So, so I think that that's what kind of set it apart. But in terms of the characters, the lingo, winter is coming. Even if you haven't watched the show, you know, you know that phrase. Yes, you do. Um, and, and so I think it, it's there. It's there um, a la, um, is a major impact. It's up there on, you know, top 10 fandoms, geekdoms of all time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. up there. What about you, Christian? I'd say it was a HBO was never not successful before this, Correct. but they became way more successful after the fact to the point where they were able to eventually create HBO max and then green light of a lot of other things that we wouldn't have seen the light of day before this moment in time. It helped, uh, in some respects, revitalize the fantasy genre. I don't believe we would have seen, mm. and I have not seen either one of these, so I can't speak to their quality, the Wheel of Time adaptation that was done and the Rings of Power as well. I'm fairly certain we would not have seen those be a thing and the money that was poured into them, especially yes. Yes. without the success of something like Game of Thrones. Very yeah. good point. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's so point. people wanted to have their Game of Thrones franchise that they could dump money in that, that be that powerful. You know, it's like, um, yeah, every, every stream in, wanted their own kind of game of thrones yeah. and make yes. the impact but it's gonna be hard it's gonna be hard to break all those records that Kino said at the beginning of this episode listen 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 <laughs> listen in in my research i found out that um up until season four or five that hbo was spending five million on on each episode and then after that it was 10 million per episode and these shoots would take over a year just from start to finish it would take over a year 
to get all this done in the how many episodes it was per season? Was it? It's around eight. Eight, eight or ten. Mm-hmm. Yeah, eight, but eight to ten, and I'm like, you, you, and, and then and, the last one was like six, but they were almost like every episode was like an hour, over an hour and thirty minutes. You know? Yeah, so, so it was, they, it was they like a movie. Those up. So yeah. you're like, we're getting ready to watch six movies. Yeah, no, <laughs> see, 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 Will, you, 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 again, you was able to binge. They broke the last season up too. Yeah, yeah, they broke it up in in parts. They we had the first half, had to wait, and I was like, y'all, y'all, so wrong for this. <laughs> y'all so wrong for this. But so that was part of the part of the like unnerving irritation was they had to wait for it. Like they mm-hmm. broke it up and different. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm like, mm-hmm. it didn't help. It did not. It did not. But, but I will say that, that you, regardless of what's your thoughts about how it ended, you cannot talk, you cannot d- uh, diminish that you watched it faithfully. I, mm-hmm. I, I don't care if you was pissed, you still watched it <laughs> oh, to yeah. the end. Yes. Mm-hmm. Cause it, it it held it, it it the way that show was set up it held you and I love the fact that um, Martin took the time to blow up this whole fantasy world then the fact of having storylines and histories and houses and all this stuff that it provided a rich rich narrative in the Game of Thrones that where literally I remember I remember preparing for season eight watching people youtube videos of the origin mm-hmm. of the houses mm. just just getting prepared and then then learning about the 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 history of the 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 giant not the giants yeah giants um the the people of the forest the the old gods and new gods all that all of that is still in the in the series that we ain't even touched on but i mean it is so so vast and so we're going to have to do another Game of Thrones episode before we get to the House of Dragons. Like, we're going to have to. because <laughs> We'll demand it. I, yeah, we're going to have to. They're going to they're gonna demand it anyway. They're going to demand it anyway because they know mm-hmm. that we need touched on, like, just we didn't crack the surface. Mm-hmm. We, right. we have not even talked about the White Walkers for real. <laughs> we, think about this. The whole point was to prepare them to fight what was coming beyond the wall. Yep, we didn't yep. talk about that for real at all, <laughs> at all. So yeah, we're gonna have to have another episode. Uh, we're yeah. gonna have to have another episode because this this was too good. But but I will I will also say this about this show that um, if you really want to understand what the Old Testament was about, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> watch this show because the same type of killing that happens in Game of Thrones happens in the Old Testament. And I mean, it, 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 we talking sex, drug? No, well, I don't know about drugs. Possibly. Well, they were they were hopped up on something. They were hopped up on something, <laughs> um, conjuring spirits and talking to the dead. Yeah, that's that's in the Bible too. That is mm-hmm. in the Bible. Like like so so don't think that that what you're witnessing is just new. No, it's it's in the scripture. It's in the scripture. Yeah, Bible. quick 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 story. So so yeah, my um my daughters um are in college and and they uh, binge Game of Thrones on their own. So we knew where where they were at, and we were finishing up. And we went and visited them up in the mountains of App State. We visited a church and listened to the pastor preaching, great sermon, and he started t- describing the Old Testament about like Israel being like really scared of, of like always being invaded from the north and then like what was going on in the south and then the like power hungry kings and, and Herod and the seduction of all this stuff and and, and Ella like my, my youngest turned to look at me he's first year in college like leaned over she goes that, sound, that sounds like Game of Thrones I was, like, I, was like, I was like exactly exactly and so like she, I was like I'm glad you're paying attention and then you can see it's so, like yeah that is exactly what is happening 100% right so yeah it's it's nothing new. It's yeah, nothing new. It's nothing new. It's nothing new. All right, all right. So here we are, finally at the end. It it's this sucks because this sucks. I'm not. I, I this is one of the one episodes I was really excited about, but I hate the fact that there's a time limit <laughs> because I mean I could sit and talk all night. With the drinks, I gotta have drinks to talk all night, though. I gotta have a right, drink. yeah, like yeah. in like in when that the final season where they're all sitting in the room together, they know what's gonna happen the next day. They're drinking, they're making new nights out of people. They're like apologizing for things. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a moment. That's what we want to do. So maybe when we gather at like a comic con or something, we can, we can do like our own Game of Thrones circle. And, and hang out with some drinks, and then we can talk about this some more. Oh, yeah. I, listen, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I will be there in November. 
Mm-hmm. I, it's on the calendar. I'm going to be there in November for the Comic Con. She got us for in Raleigh. I'm there. I'm nice. there. I'm there. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. All right, guys. So, so, um, what's your recommendations? What's your recommendations from from this? It don't have to be them to read the book, but I would, I would, I would suggest that you read the book. Read the book. Read the book. Okay. If you like the series, like literally read the book. And I'm, I'm telling you now, I'm not going to read the book. I'm being honest. I'm not going to read the book. I'm going to just listen to the audio book. <laughs> yeah. 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 Maybe, maybe that's what I'll do. I'll take your recommendation. And um, I mean, there's a lot of pack, podcasts I like listen to, but maybe I'll, I'll get the audio books and then, and, and place it, especially if I have a long journey or traveling long distances at some point in the near future. Um, going to Germany in March uh, with awesome. our college, with our college spring um, break, um, crew, they're gonna we're gonna follow in the footsteps of Martin Luther and, and do awesome. that. Very nice. So that, that's gonna be super fun. So maybe I'll get the audio book, I'll plug it in my head, and then the journey over to to Europe. I'll uh, I'll, I'll listen to that. I'll that's take that awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. But what you got, Christian? What you got? Well, I'm gonna recommend actually an anime that's currently airing right now uh, called Revenger. And then mm. the reason why I'm recommending it to here is because there is one character in there. Uh, it's taking place in the 19th century, if I remember correctly. And this is a time and place where Christianity is outlawed in Japan ever since Ooh. the Shimabara Rebellion in like 1630 something. And he is working as essentially an assassin, but every time after he kills someone, he prays to the Virgin Mary. And it's one of those things like, I don't expect that to happen. And I was like, uh, especially a topic on the uh, Kakakure Kurishitan, which are a group was known as the hidden Christians who lived in Japan, who believed in Christ for 200 years in secret. I think he may be involved with that. And I just find that utterly fascinating. So the series itself is fine. But to those of you who are interested in that part of the history, I wanted to recommend that. Nice. All right, Will, what you got? Yeah, I, I'm watching um, Last of Us on HBO, another HBO show, mm-hmm. and just watched episode three, which uh, I, I was like, this was a video game? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but I it, it's moving. I love post-apocalyptic uh, genre, um, what it, what it, what, however that looks, because it, it forces me to ask, like, what? how would I care for those that, that I love and what's most important to me? Uh, very revealing, apocalyptic in that way. So, so yeah, I'm loving that show and, and glad that it's, it's dropping and on HBO on, on Sunday evenings. That's my Sunday evening appointment television. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. So so my other recommendation is Severance from Apple Plus. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. If you have not seen that show, um, please just 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 watch it because it, it really it really touches on how we try to compartmentalize what happens inside our home and what happens outside of our home. And sometimes it don't work out like you think it does. And, right. and I, that's just that was a, that was an interesting show, but it surprised me that it was really good. So if you get an opportunity, check out Severance. If you yeah. Can. So so workplace, uh, personal life, mm-hmm. uh, uh, balance or separation, mm-hmm. and um, present uh, part time host on on Systemic Ecology. Sari and I did an episode. On systematic ecology about severance, I believe. I don't, I don't know what episode is kind of early in, in the game, so I think we did a um, episode on that to talk about it. So uh, yeah, check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, listen, listen. I know you all excited that we talked about Game of Thrones, and we loved it. But we want you to still follow us. We're all we're on all social media platforms. We have a Twitter. We have Discord. We're on Facebook. And I want to just do a shameless plug that the next episode that you might want to check out is the Power Rangers. Mm. Power Rangers. <laughs> yeah, Joe and Josh are going to be doing the Power Rangers. So so check them out. Because, um, listen, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers are still bad. They're still bad. You might not <laughs> you might not agree, but they're still, they're still <laughs> bad. And they're awesome. They're awesome. But, but just know that we love what we do we are excited about what we do and we're trying to show you that you can be a geek and still love god Mm -hmm. that you can you can geek out on anything that you want to and still practice your faith you want to know why because we are all a chosen people a kingdom a geekdom of priests This was an Anazao Ministries podcast. If you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network, be sure to check out the Anazao Ministries podcast network.